<laughs> All right, now that I built a, a, a decently sized audience off of this pedestrian ass smash clip that just exploded for no real reason, it's time to get views on something I'll actually be proud of, or uh, that's hopefully what will happen. And what exactly would that be, you might ask? Well, you see, it's only the most done to death thing on this entire platform talking about shit. Because, because no one has ever talked about shit on YouTube before. No, how, what are you talking about? Never. How could you say? But today, the shit I'll be talking about is, in my opinion, criminally underdiscussed, surprisingly isn't shit, and is actually one of the best damn games I've played in quite a long while. So let's kick off this inaugural installment of this less funny Dunk View ripoff by talking about... Everhood. So what exactly is Everhood? What is it like to play? Well, I would best describe it as Diet Undertale mixed with what I would like to call a reverse rhythm game. Let me explain. The Undertale stuff is mostly related to the game's story and presentation, which I'll get to later. It doesn't really have too much bearing on Everhood's gameplay, aside from being a quote-unquote RPG, which I mean, kinda? It could technically be called an RPG? I mean, it's got a 2D top-down overworld where the player talks to NPCs who speak in repeated sound effects and scrolling text. Uh, uh. and the player frequently exits the overworld to visit a rear perspective void and partake in a fight against an enemy while bopping to some rad battle tunes, which we'll get to. But that's pretty much the full extent of Everhood's RPG-ness. Now, I imagine you were pretty confused when I said reverse rhythm game. What does that mean? Well, it's a term I coined to describe a game where, unlike a traditional rhythm game, you don't hit notes, you avoid them. Everhood puts you on this weird five-lane track and the enemies shoot notes at you. You can dodge left, dodge right, and jump. Wave notes can be jumped over, block notes can't. Survive until the end of the song. It's a rhythm bullet hell, pure and simple, which I guess gives it another similarity to Undertale's gameplay. Not so much the rhythm part, but you know, the the bullet hell part. <laughs> the game will sometimes try to spice things up like adding in crazy visual effects to the already visually spectacular battles to distract you, punishing hits by rewinding the song, or turning into Mario Kart. But the core mechanics rarely change, aside from minigames like the aforementioned Italy racing or fucking tennis, I guess. It's an extremely fun, rewarding, yet brutally simple system, but it has to be. The moment-to-moment -moment gameplay of most rhythm games has to be simple, so as to not pull your mental energy away from, well, this. Three, two, one. But just when Everhood's gameplay starts to tepidly feel stale, it totally flips the script and, hopefully without spoiling too much, gives you the deflect ability, which completely changes how the game is played. Press down to catch a note. Catch two notes to fire a blast, which deals damage. Taking damage, firing, or grabbing a different colored note resets you. A bunch of waves or a single square note will block your shot. Black notes can't be caught, because Everhood is racist. This simple addition to an already simple system completely revolutionizes the gameplay of Everhood. Now, instead of making it to the bell, you have to race against the clock and beat your enemy before the song ends. Old note patterns that previously meant basically nothing suddenly turn into complicated webs of different colors and square notes that block your shots. It's such a graceful way to reuse content, expand on the game's mechanical depth right when it was starting to get old, and reincorporate some of that satisfying, note-hitting, traditional rhythm gameplay. Chris Norgren, or whoever made that decision, I just gotta say, props for that. Really smart game design decision. Uh, aside from the combat, there's there's not much, not gonna lie. As I said earlier, there are a few mini-games, but aside from them, there are a few thrilling things to do in the overworld, like an obstacle course with the really stiff overworld controls, finding mushrooms, a real-time battle with aforementioned stiff controls, walking down a hallway for like five hours for an easter egg you can find online, like two puzzles, and many, many more. But of course, this is an RPG, so it only makes sense that the gameplay becomes kinda shitty every now and then. Scramble. 
but it's also an Undertale-inspired RPG, which is why the game isn't a complete snooze fest. <laughs> Most importantly though, it's... It's a rhythm game, in case I haven't already made that clear. Now, what do these two genres, RPGs, and rhythm games have in common, aside from being fan favorites of movies and having bangin' ass tunes? So let's talk about the jam. The jams. Look, even if you aren't interested in buying and playing Everhood, I cannot recommend that you listen to its soundtrack enough because... Whoo mama! Now, I really value good music in video games, as it gives me a way to continue enjoying the game even when I'm not playing it. I think the Sonic franchise has demonstrated that even when a game is a complete shit show of design and programming, having a good soundtrack can always give a bad game that one redeeming quality. Luckily, not only is Everhood not a steaming pile of game design excrement like Sonic 06, as I've hopefully demonstrated, but it's got them jams! Everhood has one of the best soundtracks I've heard in a long time, and I'd like to say I have at least a decent taste in music, particularly of the video game variety. The songs are catchy, well composed, and, well, unique. Almost every song has a different kind of experience to offer. You see, Everhood's soundtrack is... weird, both in the composition of the individual songs, as well as the inconsistent style of the soundtrack as a whole. As Chris Nordgren put it, I have always loved battle music in video games. For me, it's almost its own genre of music. I convinced my co-creator Jordi Roca to make this game that is full of musical battles, because the idea of having unique battles fused with the battle themes would have felt exciting. During the early phase of Everhood, I created the music, but the longer we worked on the project, we grew more ambitious and to truly match the intensity of the... plot. We started to search for musical collaborators that would help us. Because of the wide variety of artists who worked on the game's soundtrack, Everhood's songs range wildly in tone, style, and personality, I guess. You can go from the simple dance club beat of Tinnitus Dance... to the psychedelic hard-based nightmare of You Want Gnomes, to the heavy metal battle against evil that is Wrath of God, to the trippy, very video gamey, psych rock power ballad of Feisty Flowers. <laughs> to the total acid trip that is Sprunkle. to the most video game villain song ever, Born Chaos. <laughs> to the power metal explosion of Revenge. to the dance music orgasm that is Y-O-U-R love. <laughs> to the deliciously violent and bassy 72 Everhood mix, which is the song that plays during the dev fight I showed earlier. Which, Chris, I gotta ask, do you just really like hard bass music or something? Practically all of the gnome-related battles use hard bass, so is that some kind of reference to your real-life music preferences? Let me know. To this game's hopes and dreams, the song from the intro to this video, Euthanasia Roller Coaster. The 
soundtrack is just so full of variety and creativity, and it's all so damn good! Or, well, not all of it. There are a few stinkers, mostly on Chris's end, like In It For The Good Times, Disturbance, Demon Delic Incorporated, Playing With Gnomes, Ballistic, and Groovy Gray, which, while not necessarily bad, except for the first two, I can't stand those songs, just simply lack the memorability and oomph of the Kazakh or KMEXP tracks. And this is not to say that all of Chris's songs are bad. Hell no. The aforementioned Sprunkle and You Want Gnomes are great, alongside some other decent battle tracks like Crack or Frogs Are Friends, but where Chris really shines is with the overall ambient tracks, like At The Racetrack, Space Dust, Town, On A Trip, Bubblegum Road, Echo Land, and Flower Shop, some of which I've used in this very video. They set the mood excellently and work great on their own as relaxing ambience while working on stuff, like, I don't know, editing a video, writing a script, voicing said script, mm -hmm. or just like reading or something, I don't know. But yeah, the relative abundance of weak slash not that special songs drags the soundtrack down from being on par with like Undertale or something, which is almost 100% nothing but pure bangers. Hey, speaking of Undertale, why don't I talk about the single strongest similarity these two games share? I alluded to it earlier, that's right, it's the story. I won't be saying much about the story. <laughs> In case you somehow haven't noticed, I've tried really hard to avoid discussing or including any major plot spoilers in my background footage because, well, I want you to buy this game. Spoiling the story would be a disservice to you, the viewer, as I think Everhood's story is one of its strongest aspects, and needs to be experienced as blindly as possible. I went into the game almost entirely blind, courtesy of Critical's review, and I'm glad I did, as it hit me with some pretty powerful twists and moments that wouldn't have been so effective otherwise. But I don't want to completely gloss it over, so I'll just say this. Everhood's story 180s from a pretty standard, quirky, and lighthearted Earthbound-like RPG to a somber, bittersweet tale with very unique things to say about death, accepting death, and the existential purgatory that would be immortality. It will make you do things you don't want to, but in the end, it's for the greater good of you and the people of its world. It has a lot of similarities to Undertale's plot, primarily by utilizing the whole killing people, not NPCs, moral dilemma prominent in that game. Though Everhood does a good job differentiating itself and spins it in its own, less guilt-trippy direction. It's not quite as effective as it is in Undertale, but I think that's more down to the weaker character writing than the subject matter. This game could have been significantly more effective, maybe even on par with the emotional resonance of Undertale, if the player got to know and love its characters better, as while some of them are really likable and memorable, many are disappointingly underwritten. I had a strong sense of, man, I wish they got more screen time, they seemed like a cool character throughout the whole game. But that's all I'm going to say about Everhood's story. It's a shockingly beautiful, refreshingly unique, if not sometimes just a little frustratingly high level and artsy tale that deserves to be experienced firsthand, which can honestly be used to describe the game as a whole. In an era where games feel so formulaic and uninspired, it's nice to see that another game has come out that replicates the sheer uniquity of Undertale when it came out, a game that nothing else plays or feels like. It's unbelievable that this game has flown under the radar like it has. It has almost all of the qualities of the game that inspired it, except for maybe the more accessible and easily appreciated story. Yet Critical Stream Highlight and Moist Meter are the only real notable videos covering the game that have any substantial amount of views. I guess instead of following Undertale's model of a viral explosion, Everhood has become more of a cult classic with a small but devoted audience, like the grandfather of all weird RPGs, Earthbound. Regardless of how the unsophisticated heathen is neglected, I still think that you, the viewer, should play Everhood. It's it's such a bright explosion of good game design, music, visual design, writing, and creativity. It's only $10 on Steam, which is one of the best deals I have ever seen. There's practically no reason not to play it, but oh so many reasons that you should. If uh, rating scores matter to you, well, I'm not going to rate it out of 5, nor will I rate it out of 10. Rather, since Arlo has retired his patented 7 point scale, I'm going to commit a bit of dumpster diving and adopt it for myself, purely for the novelty of being different, in which case I give Everhood a 7 out of 7. It's not perfect, obviously, but no game is, and that's not what a 7 out of 7 represents. Rather, I just think it's an exceptionally high quality product that needs to be experienced, and that I think almost anyone can enjoy. So uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks to Snowman Gaming and Jorjeristo, Jorjeristo? Uh, I don't know. For almost all of the footage in this video, and to Chris Nordgren and Jordi Roca for making a game so fantastic and inspired me to get off my ass and babble on about it for over 15 minutes, not to mention the several days of editing said babbling. I've been Trees, and this has been Edward. Hey, uh, this is me, Trace, mostly kinda unscripted here. Just wanna say, uh, 
Thank you for watching the video. Um, I would say it took like a ton of time to put together, but it really didn't. I kind of got the idea in like a flash of inspiration and just slammed it together over like a couple days. Uh, I got the inspiration to do it actually because of this random influx of subscribers from that smash clip I mentioned at the beginning. I was like, oh, okay, I got an audience now, so maybe I should do something I've always wanted to do, which is make a video review. So here we are. Uh, I'd appreciate it if you know did all the standard YouTube stuff, follow, uh, subscribe, you know, like the video, uh, share it to people. I really. I I I, 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 don't, I I think more YouTubers should do that because uh, sharing a video is much more effective than people realize it is. Like, you know, so yeah, like DM it to people on Discord, uh, you know, post it on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, whatever you want to, just send it to people. It, it, it really does help. Word of mouth really helps. Uh, follow me on Twitter and Newgrounds, I guess. Um, only catch with that is, uh, <laughs> is like, I, I draw like, uh, you know, like boobs and stuff on there. You know, I'm, I'm an, I'm, I'm, I'm an NSFW artist, so yeah, only go there if you're 18 or older, please, just because, yeah. But yeah, just like, you know, standard chill stuff, subscribe, uh, it'd be nice if I could hit a thousand subscribers, because then I could use community tab, and, uh, I guess get ads or whatever. <laughs> it'd be nice to, you know, get money, but I guess, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I do want to thank, again, I know I already said it, but I thank very much I want to give a ton of thanks to uh, Snowman Gaming. He's a uh, this really excellent channel, and uh, he has this whole he has this whole side channel where he just records game footage, like high quality game footage, and then archives it for people to use for free. Uh, really, really big thanks for that. Please, please, please go check out Snowman Gaming on YouTube. He is such a fantastic creator. Makes these really good like video game game design discussion videos or whatever, and they're really well edited. And he really knows his stuff when it comes to game design. So. Uh, yeah, cannot give enough shoutouts to him. Yeah, just, so, so yeah, like I said, please uh, buy Everhood. Like, it's it's just it's such a magical game, you know. And I really think that it, it doesn't really get enough uh, publicity. People don't talk about it enough, and not enough people have played it. It's just so, it's just so good. Uh, like I can't, I I just I can't put it into words. Just play it, please, or at least like listen to the soundtrack. I know I've used it, like I pretty much ex exclusively used it for this video. Please, 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 just experience everhood it is such a incredible piece of art and it's just an amazing i i cannot i cannot i cannot gush about it enough that was why i made this video it was just because like dang i really like it i was just like damn i really like this game you know i i gotta i gotta i gotta talk about it you know and then you know the whole opportunity came around i was like okay i'm gonna do that all right i'm probably gonna stop i've probably said everything like i i, I you know i really need to say um i don't know if i'll do more of these uh this one was a little draining to do just because like I was like working on it hours and hours and hours for several days because my parents weren't around so I just didn't have anything else to do. Uh, so I don't know how much, I don't know if I'll do, I don't know how soon the next one will be. I don't even know if I'll do another one. Uh, it will probably be on Noida, like I kind of alluded to that in the title. I, I think, I don't remember, I haven't watched it and read that thing in a while, but yeah. So the next one should be Noida. Uh, either way, even if that video does or does not come, uh, play Noida, you know, Stan Noida. Excellent, excellent, excellent roguelike. Uh, yeah, just like go watch the trailer or whatever. I'll probably uh, link it in the description. But yeah, play play Noida. It is so good. But yeah, other topics from aside from Noida, maybe like Helltaker. Uh, oh shit, I can't think of anything else. Fuck. Well, I can't necessarily think of many other examples other than Helltaker. Oh, uh, Cluster Truck. I, I do want to cl talk about Cluster Truck at some point because uh, that is, again, another very, very, very underrated game that uh, that not enough people talk about, and it has a lot of really cool ideas, and so I want to talk about Cluster Truck. Uh, let's see. I'm just going through my Discord. I, saw, I, 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 I mentioned some things I was going to talk about. Uh... Oh yeah, I might, I might also talk about games I kind of like, I don't like or find overrated, like uh, Kirby Star Allies, uh, Sonic Mania, The Binding of Isaac, etc. I have a lot of things to say about those games, and people they they will likely make the people <laughs> very mad. <laughs> uh, or I guess like Super Fancy Pants too, oh, and Shovel Knight. Yeah, those are those are both games I could say things about. Maybe the first more so than the latter. Uh, I didn't play Shovel Knight very much. I didn't finish it. Okay, now I, now I think, now I think I've said everything I, I need to. It's I, I need to stop rambling. This is a lot of stuff, and the video has gone on too long. Uh, I'm if you made it through, I'm very glad that you did. It doesn't really, you don't, you didn't really need to or whatever. Uh, 
watch other videos of mine. They aren't necessarily really like this because this is the first time I've ever tried this, hence why the production's kind of crappy. You know, the audio isn't particularly good. I'm recording this on a... I don't know if you can hear that. On a phone. <laughs> I didn't mean to get that close. Sorry. But yeah, I'm recording this on a phone hooked up to my computer. You know, like I have no acoustic foam or whatever. My mom's in the house on a conference, I think. Like, it's a bit of a mess. You know, I'm, I'm using like a free editing software, so... I'm rambling again. I'm rambling again. I need to stop. Uh, first video, uh, so it was a bit of a new thing for me. I really enjoyed it. Might do more. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> thank you for watching. Uh, uh, I, I guess I will maybe see you later. I guess this is the first time I've kind of properly used my voice on YouTube, so that's pretty cool. But yeah, uh, subscribe to the channel, I guess. Like, you know, I've heard that just saying to subscribe to your YouTube channel works, so... Uh, do it, I guess. Yeah. Goodbye.